Welcome to Unleash the Awesome with Dave Gambrill. All of us have unique skills, talents, and abilities that aren't being used to their full potential. Our mission is to share the people, tools, apps, and other resources that will help you unleash your awesome on the world. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Dave, and welcome to another episode of Unleash the Awesome, where it is my job to bring you the tools, the resources, and the people that can help you unleash your awesome on the world. And I'm so excited today to have one of my friends, Stu McLaren, joining us, who is definitely going to help you with your business and your life because he's so good at taking ideas and simplifying them and allowing you to implement them in your life and business. So if you don't know Stu Little on his background, he coaches and consults New York Times bestselling authors, top rated speakers, experts, and niche celebrities on how to launch, grow, and scale high profit recurring revenue streams. And I know a lot of us are on that revenue roller coaster and we would like to smooth that out. So I know Stu will get into that today with us. He's a former founder of the world's number one membership platform for WordPress Wishlist member. He had the chance to serve and support over 60,000 online communities and membership sites. So he's had one heck of a look at the backside of all this stuff, all the analytics, all the data. Through that experience, he gained a unique insight into the subtle membership nuances that produce massive results. Today, he uses that knowledge to help his clients and launch a, uh, to launch and grow multiple high six and seven figure membership sites through his hands-on training course called Tribe. So without further ado, let me welcome my friend, Stu McLaren. What's up, my friend? Mr. Dave, how the heck are you, buddy? I am doing great. Why don't you let people in on uh, where you're joining us from today? I'm here in New Jersey, but I think you're in a little more tropical place, right? Yeah, if you hear some background noise, because I'm outside, I am uh, here in beautiful Hawaii. So my uh, family and I, we make a point of trying to escape the cold Canadian winter. And so we are here and uh, we are soaking up as much of the sunshine as we can. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, I've been watching you through Instagram. By the way, those of you uh, listening right now or watching, if you want to see how to integrate life and business, follow Stu on Instagram. He does such a great job. Uh, and I've been watching him over the last couple of weeks in Hawaii. I'm like, hmm. I have to figure out how to do workations from Hawaii. So, yeah, well, the way ours typically work is that, um, you know, I'm up early. So, I, I, like you said, I, I am still working. So, um, I, I get up early at five in the morning and uh, essentially I work from five in the morning till 11 a.m. And then the rest of the day is with the family and we go and play and we explore and, you know, we do all kinds of fun stuff. So, yeah, yesterday we were exploring, you know, some museum, the Bishop Museum uh, here uh, in Honolulu. And uh, the kids were learning about volcanoes and they're learning about marine life and they're learning about Hawaiian culture. And uh, it's just so much fun. But I, I'm so grateful to be able to have that, you know, balance, you know, and, and to be able to do both uh, simultaneously. So, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And, and that's one of the things I admire about you is you have figured out how to build a business around your life, right? Instead of building a business that takes over your life or owns your life, you've figured out a way. And I know it probably wasn't always that way for you, but it seems like you've hit that sweet spot now of being able to integrate your business into your life. And I know that's what a lot of people struggle with when they start building a business. It's, you know, that you've heard that old adage of you don't own a business, the business owns you. Yeah. And I think, you know, the reality of it is, Dave, is that, uh, you know, Am I perfect? Is our is it perfect? No. You know, you go through different seasons of life where, you know, you're going to have a season that's, you know, busy and a season that's not so busy. And, and I think more than anything, it's about being intentional about what you want in your life. I know for my wife and I, you know, travel is a huge thing that we want to uh, weave in and incorporate into our lives and especially expose our kids to. And, uh, and so we just started asking different types of questions. We just started asking like, how, how could we, you know, incorporate this into our life? How could we still travel? How could we escape the Canadian winter? How could we build a business that gives us that, you know, flexibility and still, you know, at the same time, still drive things forward. We still want to continue to succeed and grow. And, and part of that is, you know, we're in a season now where our team is growing. So learning to lead, you know, um, where you're not there physically with everybody 24 seven is it's another, you know, challenge that, uh, you know, you're faced with. So, you know, listen, everything's not always pinpoint perfect. It's not always, you know, rainbows and unicorns, but it's about being intentional about what it is that you do want so that you can begin asking different questions and begin finding different answers for yourselves. Mm -hmm. I love what you said there. How can I? Because a lot of people just start with, I can't, right? I can't do that. There's no way we could do that. 
Um, that's incredible. The other thing too, a testament to your team, you know, I hadn't really spoken to you one-on-one -on -one until we just started this about five minutes ago and your team was so good about saying, okay, here's what Stu's got going on. He's in Hawaii. He loves doing this. We'll get him on at this time. Here's what his calendar looks like. So to your point, when you get a good team in place, it really works well. So as you're running off, looking at lava and eating that, uh, whatever that beautiful dessert you had last night was, <laughs> your team is doing all that stuff behind the scenes, which I know is another challenge for a lot of people is how do you scale and how do you, how do you start to uh, outsource that stuff? And that's why I really appreciate what you do because you seem to have figured out how to put these strategies in place to scale and to scale smart. Uh, and I think that's where a lot of people miss out on as they're starting and growing their businesses. How do we put these systems in place to help with that? Yeah, team is really important. I mean, at the end of the day, none of us achieve anything without the help, advice, guidance uh, of somebody else, you know, and sometimes that comes in the form of, you know, team of people that, you know, work with you. Uh, sometimes that comes from mentors. Sometimes that comes from, you know, friends or colleagues, uh, you know, speaking into what it is you do. I know for me, like leading a team is definitely new territory, particularly in the sense of like the, how quickly our team is growing. You know, in the last several months, we've, we've hired, you know, several key positions, specifically leadership positions. And I think that that was a really uh, monumental moment for us is identifying that there's a difference between, you know, just having like uh, an army of people, you know, essentially, you know, fulfilling on tasks and executing tasks. But we want a team of thinkers. We want a team of people who are thinking and strategizing and, and so that we can brainstorm together. Because at the end of the day, I am not the source of all answers for our, our team, you know, and, and it, we operate so much better and so much faster and we accomplish so much more when everybody's thinking for themselves and thinking for the greater vision for the company. And that's what excites me the most. And listen, we're still navigating this. We're still figuring this out and we're still nailing down, you know, like we've, we've gotten clear on our vision and our core values and all that, uh, the culture side of things, which plays such a huge role in the performance of the team. And, uh, and so, listen, it's always an ongoing, evolving uh, process. And uh, I'm excited to be in the midst of it. And I'm excited to be working with, you know, amazing people who do create the ability for us to continue to push forward, continue to accomplish more, and yet still design the business so that we all accomplish what we want. That is so good. Uh, those of you taking notes, I hope you got that. You know, Stu just said, hire people and get out of their way, right? Just hire really good people and let them do their thing. Don't micromanage. So that, that's incredible, Stu. So let's jump into where your sweet spot is and a little background for people. I met you, I think it was maybe two and a half, three years ago uh, at an event. And for those of you that don't like to go to events or conferences, let me tell you something. This is where you meet everybody that's cool that will help you in your business and help you up level. So I actually, a couple of years ago, went to a Brendan Burchard event. I met Jeff Walker and John Walker at that event. They invited me to their event. I go to their event and I see this guy in the back of the room, Stu, Walk, uh, Stu McLaren. I'm like, who is Stu? I don't really know who you are at the time. Somebody said, oh, he's helped Michael Hyatt grow this platform university to this major thing. And I'm like, this is pretty cool. I should probably get to go meet Stu. So we had a little chat and I said, listen, I, I think my audience would probably like some of the stuff that you're doing. And you kind of gave me a wink and said, oh, we have some stuff coming. So <laughs> that was right before you started Tribe and I had no idea it was coming and I had no idea actually you were gonna go step, uh, step up on Jeff's stage and speak and your wife Amy and I was like, oh wow, this is kind of awkward. I'm here talking to him like he's just some dude in the audience and now he's up here giving a presentation which was pretty cool. But um, that's where I kind of ran into in Tribe and the whole idea of membership groups. And to me, at the time, I didn't really know what that was. I'd only seen a couple people kind of start with that concept of, of how to put it out there because a, a lot of folks in my community are speakers, trainers, coaches, consultants. And so we spend a lot of time on stage or in front of a class. And if we're not doing that, we're trading hours for dollars. And I know a lot of people would love to not have to do that all the time to get a little more time leveraged. So if you could, why don't you just give us a little history around membership groups and how you got there and, and maybe we can dig into that a little bit deeper. Well, so I had a business uh, about golly, uh, 10, 11 years ago. And basically the business depended on me. It was a consulting business. And so the only way the business could grow is if I gave more time. And I got to a point where I just didn't have any more time to give. The writing was on the wall because it was a really stressful business that was always, that always meant I, my schedule was determined by the clients I was working with. So meaning 
when they had busy times, I had busy times. And then when you have multiple clients who all have busy times around the same time, it creates a nightmare of a situation. And so, you know, I was newly married. My wife and I, we were looking to start our family and start to have kids. And the writing was on the wall, which was like, dude, you can't continue to do this because if you continue going down this path, then you're going to get swallowed up by the work and you're not going to be able to deepen the relationship with your wife. You're not going to be there as a father to your future kids. And so something had to change. Something had to give. Ultimately, I started asking different questions and I started getting some great feedback and some insight from colleagues and friends of mine who said, Stu, why don't you take what you're doing in your consulting practice and start teaching more people how to do that within a membership site? I had no idea what that meant. But I looked into it and essentially it was a far more leveraged way to be able to share my knowledge and expertise with a whole lot more people. But the problem there was I started using the technology that was available back then, you know, and uh, it just was nowhere near what it is today. And I was, I was getting stuck in the weeds. I was getting stuck in like figuring out like how to set things up and HT access files and server settings. And Dave, I was way over my uh, head in all of that. And um, I was moaning and groaning to a friend of mine about it. And I said, man, I just wish there was like an easy solution um, for something like WordPress. WordPress was a blogging platform that I was familiar with. And I said, it would just be awesome if there was just a, a solution that I could just, you know, kind of plug into WordPress and away I go. And um, the person I was talking to at the time, his name was Tracy Childers. And he said to me, he's like, well, why don't you just create it yourself? And I said, dude, I'm like, I'm just sitting here telling you that I am having technical problems. I am not the technical guy. There's no way I'm going to be able to go and create something. And he said, well, why don't we team up together? Because I have a programmer that I work with that is tremendously talented. It could absolutely bring this vision to life. That was the seed of the idea. We came together and we did. We, we worked together a month, literally a month later, we had the beta version of Wishlist. And then we went live with the public version a month after that uh, in October 22nd, 2008. And what happened was something that I could never have predicted, Dave. It was like right product, right time. And everything just took off because it met a need. And we long story short, ended up powering tens of thousands of membership sites. I, when I sold my shares, we were powering uh, close to 70,000 membership sites at the time. Mm. And what that experience gave me was a unique insight into what works when it comes to growing these online communities and membership based businesses. Because there were a few membership sites that grew year over year over year where the vast majority of them plateaued and so i started paying attention to what was it those few sites were doing differently than everybody else and that's when i started to discover some very uh, uncharacteristic uncommon approaches to membership sites but these uncharacteristic approaches worked and they worked like clockwork and so that's what i started paying attention to now the next chapter of that story is that I was looking for an opportunity to be able to apply these strategies to a fresh new membership. That ultimately led me to partnering with New York Times bestselling author Michael Hyatt. He at the time had a business um, where he was predominantly generating his revenue from being a platform speaker. He would travel around the country delivering keynote presentations, and he would deliver anywhere between 30 to 40 a year. The problem was that you add a day on the front and a day on the back for travel, it meant he was gone over 100 days a year. So when I met with him, he's literally coming off this New York Times bestselling book, he's in high demand, he's, you know, people are wanting him to speak all over. And I meet with him and I said, Michael, what's a big challenge that you're experiencing right now in your business? With a big sigh, Dave, he's just kind of like, Stu, I'm tired, he said, I have this tension between I love who I get to serve, I love the message I get to share, but I just want to be home with Gail, his wife, and yeah. my five daughters, and my grandkids. It's like I'm tired of being on the road. And that's when I said I can help. And that's, uh, that's what led us to the next chapter of you know, creating uh, Platform University for him and his company. And that was amazing. And that comes from a guy, Michael Hyatt, who was a CEO of Thomas Nelson Publisher. So was already a busy guy prior to doing that. So it's not like he was never super busy and, and doing some traveling, but totally. But how amazing is that, that he has all this success and he kind of sits down and was like, 
my words, not his, but he's like, man, is this worth it? Like, this is so, this such a grind. Like there's gotta be a better way. So again, it sounds like a great opportunity for you where the timing's right. You want to unleash your awesome on the world. You're like, well, I got some information, Michael, maybe we can make this work. And that's kind of where I started to meet you because we actually had Michael Hyatt come in to do uh, an event with John Maxwell called the day about books. Yeah. Talking about publishing. Uh, so here's the irony there, Dave, that, event which i believe was in florida am yep. i am yep. i right yep. so it was that event that i had this conversation with michael really um, it was so you know he had uh, just delivered that presentation he had signed hundreds of books and uh and then we had dinner that evening and what was amazing was what transpired after that so once we started and launched a membership site for him we welcomed 1100 members in the first week 2,500 after the first year, 4,500 after the second year, 6,000 after the third year. And before he knew it, he had a multi-million dollar a year business just solely based on the membership. And that gave him options. Yeah. That gave him options now where he could say no to the speaking engagements that didn't light him up. He could say no to the other business opportunities that were coming his way that, again, weren't a total fit for him. And we've all been there where we've made those decisions where we've said yes to a speaking engagement or we've said yes to a, a business uh, decision because we felt like we needed to. Like those opportunities, if we didn't say yes in that moment, they'd be gone forever. Yeah. Um, it transformed his business and it transformed his life because then ultimately what it did is it gave him more breathing room. He didn't, it gave him more breathing room to think and to, and to really design the business the way he uh, really wanted it to. And so the other side of that is it also gave him a chance to reach more people, yeah. you know, with, um, we're now reaching thousands and thousands of people on a monthly basis, which really lit him up in a whole new way to be able to get that material to them and really serve a lot more people on a consistent basis. So at the end of the day, it was a huge win. I'm super grateful for that opportunity and for the partnership that we had. And ultimately what it led to was people started asking like, how are you doing this? Yep. You know, and, uh, that led to where we are now where, uh, I have, poured all that time energy into training people on how to do the same thing for their business, how to add a recurring revenue component to whatever business, whether it's a product-based business, a service-based business, a knowledge-based business like Michael's or a community-based business. It can be done. It's the future of business. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And that's what I get to do. And it lights me up. So exciting. And I love hearing the passion in your voice, man, because that's great. You're on a new mission now too, to help all these people get their message out to the world, which is really awesome. So I can tell that people listening or watching are like, okay, Stu, that's great. Congratulations for you and Michael Hyatt. Um, where do I start? What do I do? How do I, I have all this information I want to share with the world. How do I start a membership group? What are some things I should be thinking about? I, that probably means I have to create a ton of content, right? Well, uh, actually, no. So Dave, this is one of the cool components. Like we often think that the more content we provide, the more value we create, but that's actually not true. So when we look at the characteristics of the sites that succeeded year over year over year, they did not provide more content than everybody else. It wasn't about the volume of content. What they focused on, and this is the thing that I want everybody to write down, they focused on helping their members make progress easier and faster. So it wasn't about the volume of content, it was about the speed of implementation. And many times that means we gotta zoom back, we gotta zoom out and realize that it's not about just bombarding them with as much content as humanly possible. It's about looking at, okay, where are our people now? Where do they wanna go? And how can we break down that uh, journey into bite-sized steps and help people make progress easier and faster? And oftentimes we think that the only reason that people are gonna stay is if they get the huge wins. Like in my world, that would be like the Patty Palmer who you know launches a membership site for art teachers and within six months has over 2,400 members and within two years has over 6,000 members. That would be like the huge wins. But there are something just as powerful and significant for our audiences that's really important. And those are the little wins, the baby steps. Like I think of Ginger in our audience. So Ginger was somebody who we had a meetup for our tribe, our, our clients and customers. And at the end of it, uh, she raises her hand and says, Stu, I just need clarity on like, what do I need to do now? 
um, I don't know what, where to get started. And I said, okay, Ginger. I said, so let's talk about that. Tell me a little bit more about who you serve and, and how you help. And she said, well, by trade, I'm an interior designer. And so I love helping people create a warm and friendly home because I believe that when you have a warm and friendly home, it creates the environment for much deeper relationships and meaningful relationships with your family, your friends, and so forth. I said, Ginger, that's beautiful. And I said, okay, so you help people create a more friendly home. She said, yes. And I said, awesome. And she said, but I don't have an audience. Like I, I don't have a big audience that I'm, I'm selling to. So I, I don't know where to get started with all this. And I said, okay, well, let's break this down. I said, if you were to begin building your audience, what do you think would be a good first step? And she thought for a moment and she said, well, I, I hear you talk about you know, Facebook Lives as a good first step. And I said, great, okay. So if a Facebook Live was a good first step, what would be the next right step toward creating your first Facebook Live? And she said, well, I, I guess I would probably outline what I'm gonna say. And I said, great, okay, great, great. So we had like a flip chart and I said, so let's just kind of go through that. And I have a five part framework for it. The first part is a hook. And so this is really like when people are scrolling through their Facebook feed, the title of your Facebook Live is really important because that's what's gonna pull people in. So that's what we call the hook. Second part of it is a story. I love using stories to connect with the audience. Third part about it is your teaching points. And I never have more than three teaching points. If you have more than three, it begins to get overwhelming for people. So I love to keep it nice and tight. So three teaching points, then a summary, and then a call to action. Like, what do you want people to do? So we literally outlined it on the flip chart. We wrote it all down. It took us maybe 10 minutes. And, uh, and then I could, the audience could kind of sense where I was going um, because I was like, okay, Ginger, give me your phone. And she's like, what, why? And I said, well, we're going we're gonna to do the Facebook Live right now. And she's like, what? No, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> and I said, you're ready, Ginger. You have everything outlined. I said, worst case scenario, you literally just have to read what we wrote on the flip chart. And she took a deep breath. She's like, okay. So, you know, I typed in the, the title of the, the Facebook Live, which was the hook. And then I pressed go and away she went. Mm. And Dave, she was nervous in the beginning. Like, you know, we all are. Whenever we're trying something new, we're, we're nervous, we're anxious. But she kept through and she, she'd get going. And as she got more into it, she got more comfortable. And then we finished that and we close it off. And she's just like flying high as a kite. Everybody in the room was just like so pumped for her because she like overcame this huge, you know, um, uh, uh, she, she had this huge accomplishment. And as a result of that, like within the first 24 hours, she had over 600 people view that Facebook Live. Mm. And within the first week, she had over 3,000. And the most important part about this story was that was the lead domino for her because she started doing consistent Facebook Lives thereafter, building her audience. And that is my point is because when you have stories of progress like this, different people will see themselves in those different stories. Yes, some people are gonna to relate to the Patty Palmers who have those huge successes. But if you don't also share the stories and focus on helping people, even with the little steps, in this case for Ginger, that was doing her first Facebook Live, then you're missing out because though there's a whole lot of people that will also relate to Ginger's story. And so the point of the matter is, is that what we've gotta get clear on when we're teaching and helping our audience make progress is where are they now? Where do they want to be? And what does that journey look like? And really breaking it down into bite-sized steps and then helping people focus on the next right step for where they are in that journey. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. And I know the people that are trying to take notes right now, their pens are catching on fire because they're scribbling so furiously. The good news is Stu was nice enough to create a 50 page guide for you that has a lot of this information in there. If you just go to gamble.com slash tribe guide, I'll make sure you have a link for this no matter where you're watching this or listening to this, maybe in the show notes, gamble.com slash tribe guide, a lot of this stuff's in there. So if your, your pen's running out of ink or you just ground your pencil into the paper because Stu gave you all that gold right there, don't worry about it, we got you covered. So. Stu, that's, that's the thing I hear a lot of people in uh, my audience talk about is this idea of like, I'm not an expert. I'm not an authority. I don't, who am I, right? This negative self-talk about who am I to be doing this? But what I heard you say there was, listen, there's a, there's a path. There's a, you know, from, from A to Z, A being beginning and Z being mastery, you are somewhere along that path. And there's some amount of people that are behind you. And I've heard someone put it this way, um, you know, to a second grader, a fifth grader, 
is a God, right? Because they're just yes. a little further ahead. They're just a little further up there. And, and they will look to that person and look up to what it is they're doing. And they'll pay attention to everything they're doing because they have figured out how to move from second grade to fifth grade. So I guess to your point, you got to figure out, is your person just starting? Were they in grad school? Like, where are they on that path? And just meet them where they are with what you have. Is that a good recap of that? Totally. You know, and uh, here's a good example. So um, there's a good friend of mine, John, and he has a membership site that literally has now, uh, gosh, I think he's approaching like seven or 8,000 people in this membership. And it's called Herb Mentor. And it teaches people how to essentially uh, live a healthy life by incorporating herbs uh, into their life, whether it be into their food or for, you know, natural herbal remedies to like, you know, heal colds and all that kind of stuff. But when Don started this membership, he was not the expert. Like I, he was not the face of the membership. He was not the one teaching the content, but what he was was passionate about the material and he got clear about like how he could help people make progress in this area and he brought together other people so he was more like the coordinator or the facilitator mm -hmm. where he wasn't the source of all knowledge but he was the one being able to bring the pieces of the puzzle together for people and so you don't always have to be the face or the expert or the the go-to source of information you can absolutely have all kinds of success by being the coordinator, the one who is facilitating the experience and helping people get clear on what is the next right step for them and then being in a position to be able to bring the resources, bring the knowledge, bring the next steps to those people. Even though it may not be you teaching it, it may be getting that information from others and just knowing where to go to be able to find those people who can help your audience. So there's lots of different ways to be able to structure and set up a membership site. Sometimes you are going to be the expert and you will be the one providing the information and you want to do that in a way that uh, doesn't overwhelm your audience like we talked about, but also doesn't overwhelm you as the creator. You don't want to be stuck on a content treadmill. But then there are also other ways to be able to do it even if you aren't the expert. And there are many examples of very successful memberships that are not dependent on the person who started the membership being the expert. They're just the ones, you know, coordinating and facilitating and gathering the information to be able to help people make that progress. Mm. And I think about Michael Hyatt, right? You were the one kind of behind the scenes putting it all together and coordinating. He was the face of it, right? So you can also partner with people uh, in that scenario as yes, well. Yes, absolutely. Big opportunity there. And more so than ever before, because listen, there's a lot of uh, experts who just don't have the bandwidth to also be able to, you know, run the business side of things. And, you know, in Michael's case, that was, that's exactly what was happening. You know, he didn't have the bandwidth. He was on the road speaking a lot. And so it needed somebody else, in this case, me, to be able to be that point person, to be able to strategize and develop it all together. Where Michael, he just, you know, we essentially created all the content for his membership site over the course of six days we created a year's worth of content in six days and we would do three two day video shoots. And the way it would work is like, we would prep Michael ahead of time, but for the most part, like he would show up and it would be like, okay, Michael, we are going to be doing a video on this. Here are your, you know, your, your main talking points and boom, he would run and he would run with those talking points. Boom. That video was done. Okay, great. And then, so for his standpoint, it was just show up and teach, show up and teach. And, we would create a year's worth of content in six days. Mm -hmm. That, my friend, is what gets you off of that content treadmill because of the way we structured that content. And so content strategy is a very important piece of the puzzle so that you don't overwhelm your audience, but so that you don't also overwhelm yourself. Mm -hmm. I see a uh, word swag uh, Instagram post with that quote all over it, Stu. I know people <laughs> are going to be taking that and putting that out here in just a few minutes. So, so. I, thank you for sharing this. This is so incredible. And again, if you guys did not already get that guide, just go to gamble.com slash tribe guide to get it. But let me tell you about Stu's course and coaching program that he has. I'm actually one of the students. I went through the first go round back when I was at this event and Stu kind of gave me that wink in the back. I think it was like February. And he said, wait till August, buddy. We got something. <laughs> it's going to be okay. I'll, I'll be nice and I'll, I'll let you come, come and buy away. And if you want, I'm like, all right, cool. I'll be there. And the cool thing is you are actually teaching people how to do this. And you've now had a, a number of classes uh, go through it. And it, it's an incredible course. It's an incredible workshop. 
Um, you teach all that stuff in there and, and then some. What has been your biggest takeaway uh, from growing this? Because you started, what was it, two and a half, three years ago with this? Yeah. So uh, it'll be uh, three years ago. Um, okay. And, you know, Dave, I think there's been all kinds of takeaways, um, both on a personal and professional level. I would say the biggest takeaway from a professional level is just the importance of helping our people get results. Mm -hmm. You know, we live and breathe by something that we call the circle of awesomeness. And I know it's a cheesy, you know, funny name, but essentially here's how it works. At the top of the circle is the sale. So once the sale is made, this is basically the beginning of the journey that we have with our clients and customers. It's not the end. We look at it like this is the beginning. And so once a sale is made, the next focus for us is to help our people get a result. And just like what we talked about earlier, every result matters, whether it's the big wins, the little wins, and everything in between. We are wholly focused as a company on helping people make progress down that path, that success path that we call it. And so once we help people get a result, what we then have at the bottom of the circle is a story. And the story becomes one of your most powerful marketing assets in your business. The next step on the circle, if, if we keep rotating up, would be to share that story. So it means sale, result, story, and share. Because here's the crazy thing, Dave, from a business standpoint, our business continues to grow year over year over year. And the primary marketing driver behind that are just the stories of our clients and customers getting results. The more we help them get a result, the easier it is for us to attract other people who want the same results. And so it's kind of like this, um, that's why we call it the circle of awesomeness because it's become you know, something that we, a philosophy that we live by in our company, but it's also become this incredibly powerful way to attract the people that we want to serve. Now, on the personal side, there's been two big takeaways. Continuing on the circle of awesomeness, one of the, the um, extra benefits of that is that the more you help your clients get results, the more confidence it creates in you that your stuff actually works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, like it's this weird thing because then you start selling with more confidence. You, you, you have this you deep rooted belief that, Hey, if you are somebody who's like, for me, if, if, if there's somebody in your audience who is sharing their expertise, either from a platform or through books or through a podcast, I know without a shadow of a doubt that we can help them exponentially grow their business with a membership site. I know that I have 110% confidence and certainty in that because we have literally helped thousands and thousands of people do that. We track the results. We see the results coming in virtually every single day in all kinds of markets from photography and calligraphy to fitness and finance to health and music to dog training for crying out loud. It does not matter what the area of expertise. We see it every single day in our tribe. And because of that, I have a deep rooted belief and confidence in the material that has come because of that circle of awesome that has come because of the laser focus on helping our clients get results. So from that standpoint, like when we are talking about people who may, you know, be questioning their, their expertise or maybe saying to themselves like, who am I, you know, to be sharing this or, you know, I don't know if I'm really the expert that all gets washed away when you just start helping people get a result. And in the beginning, that may mean helping a small group of people. And heck, in the beginning, that may mean helping a small group of people for free. But you would do it to get the result, to yeah. get the story, and it starts building. It's like this snowball that just builds and builds and builds. So that was a huge you know, takeaway on a personal level. The second personal level takeaway for me was actually my ego, Dave. Mm. If I'm just being, you know, just get right, you know, peeling back the, the layers of the onion here. It was my ego. I, because I, I used to think Stu was the expert, the guy with the knowledge about how to build a successful, profitable recurring revenue stream. And anybody who bought in was the student down below the mountain. And there was like this separation. Mm. But one of the greatest things that has happened for me was realizing that the more I eliminate that separation, 
and um, the better, more rewarding the experience becomes. So for me, like, dude, we're hanging out here. Like, yeah. you know, you, you actually, you know, were the one that referred me to the Peloton, you know, like, you know, there's the, the friendship, you know, extends beyond just the transaction. And I think part of that is that this, this is a common thing. Like I now have grown to love hanging out with my clients and customers. We routinely, when we go and I speak at different events, we host meetups specifically to get together with our clients and customers. Before that would never have happened. I would have been the introvert that would be hiding up in my hotel room, not really wanting to talk to anybody. And now though, I, I gain so much um, joy from hearing the stories of our clients and customers and, and really deepening that relationship with them. And I, what it does is it connects me to the bigger purpose. Like, um, is it okay if I just share a quick story here that emphasizes this, Dave? You do whatever you want, Stu. Okay, so um, I was at an event uh, recently and our clients and customers know that I love hearing their stories. Many of them, every single day, share their stories of progress in our you know, uh, Facebook group. So yeah. I see them. And I virtually. see them too. There's a yeah. lot of them there, yeah. A lot of them. And so I see those every, uh, every day. But there's a, also a group of people who don't share. They just don't feel comfortable sharing in a virtual environment, and that's totally fine. And so in this situation, uh, there was this woman, Jacqueline. And so she sees me at an event. She comes over to me and she said, Stu, like, I just want to – share uh, something with you because I know how much these stories light you up. She said, I, I'm one of those people, I'm a lurker. So she said, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, active in the group. I don't post in the group. I certainly don't share stories in the group, but I, I feel like I've got to sh share this with you. I said, okay, great. Tell me about it. She said, well, one of the biggest lessons I learned from you going through the program tribe was that to really focus on a narrow niche, become known for something specific. Mm -hmm. She said, you kept saying this over and over and over again, become known for something specific. She said, but when I looked at my business, I wasn't really specific. I had this blog that was like really broad and general and it helped uh, all kinds of creative people with all kinds of things from sewing and knitting to, you know, do it yourself crafts to, you know, all this do it yourself stuff. She said, so I kept hearing your voice and so I decided and committed to like narrowing my focus. So I narrowed it to quilting. She said, now I was scared out of my mind to narrow it, but I trusted you and I trusted the process. She said, fast forward um, nine months. She said, I focused on quilting and I started to gain all kinds of traction by doing so. And I ultimately launched my membership site. She said, Stu, this is what is mind boggling to me. She said, that membership site that's focused on quilting, quilting will do just over six figures this year. And I was like, what? I'm like, Jacqueline, that is crazy. That's amazing. And she said, yeah, but that's only part one of the story. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what, what could be part two? And she said, well, I live in this uh, town in New Jersey, actually, just outside of New Jersey. And she said, um, we used to have a railway that ran through this town. When the railway was there, the town was booming. But the moment the railway stopped going through the town, the town started to drop off. Town started to, people weren't living there. Buildings were starting to be boarded up. And she said, it was heartbreaking for me because I'd see these historic buildings in our beautiful town that were being boarded up. And now it was starting to become this town that nobody wanted to be there. She said, so how does this relate to the membership? She said, well, I started having a conversation with my husband about like, how could we revitalize this town? She said, ultimately where we landed was that we picked one of those historic buildings and we said, we're going to buy that building. And she said, the membership has made it possible. We've now bought that building, but it goes a step further. She said, now we're also hiring people in the town to help us with the quilting membership. And she said, that's what's happening is the membership is helping us revitalize this town. She said, so for me, like, this is so much more than just a membership site about quilting. This is what that membership represents, not only for me and my life, but also for our town. And she said, I just want to thank you. And I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm just like, this is amazing. Like you just never know the ripple effect 
that's going to happen. And that's what lights me up. And so, you know, at the end of the day, Dave, like I'm passionate about this stuff because of the ripple effect, because it's not just about what it is going to do for the people uh, who create membership sites. It's also about what it's going to do for their people and they're helping people in all kinds of incredible ways. And that is what lights me up is that ripple effect. I just got chills, Stu. That was, that was incredible. And, and the, the thing is for all of you listening right now, watching, if you don't ever lean into this and get your message out there, none of that can happen. Right. So totally. you got you to start. And, and, and what's crazy too, Dave, like I have um, a, a much deeper sense of this because I'm more connected to our audience than ever before. Like mm -hmm. I was saying to you, this was one of those personal breakthroughs for me. And, and that's why I have such a conviction in what it is that we are teaching and wanting to get it out to as many people as possible. Like I think of like Leslie Vernick. So Leslie, she helps women who are in broken marriages, who feel trapped that they can't get out of those marriages. And I just think about the literally thousands of women that she is helping through her marriage membership site transform their lives. Or um, I, I'm thinking of Dana Abraham, who helps parents manage challenging children and how she is helping them, you know, get over those challenges and deepen their relationships with kids. And I'm thinking about the ripple effect that that's having on the parents, but also those kids. Or I'm thinking about people like Christy Hawkins or Tamara Bennett or Nicholas Wilton who are helping people unleash their creativity and whether it's in painting or uh, you know Tamara Bennett has a membership site that helps people create decorative door hangers Dave I, I don't even these these markets are were never even on my radar yeah but but what I do know is that we're all helping people in some area of life, whether it's in relationships, in parenting, whether it's becoming a better artist, whether it's helping people in business or developing a better relationship with your pet and dog or uh, learning music or whatever it may be, but we're all helping people in some way. And I can't help but believe that that is making this world a better place. And so I am just much more deeply connected to that because of the relationship I now have with our clients and customers. And uh, that was about letting go of the ego. Mm. Wow. Uh, I, I feel like I should just be quiet for a second and let all that sink in, but I also need to be respectful of your time. So uh, in the few minutes we have left, Stu, um, is there anything else you wanted to, to share with our audience or any call to action or um, maybe wanted to talk about Village Impact? I didn't know if you wanted to get into that and the awesome, um, organization that you and your wife started? Yeah, well, first and foremost, I would tell people to go and get that guide because, mm. you know, if you go to gambrel.com forward slash tribe guide, um, it basically walks you through the beginning steps of, okay, Stu, I, I, I have information I want to share. I want to start a membership site, but where do I start? That guide begins to walk you through those early questions of, is your market a right market for a membership site? You know, what should you be thinking about as far as content and how should you begin, you know, planning this out? That guide is the beginning step. So I highly recommend people go and get that. It's a great resource that my team have put together. I'm very proud of that. Um, as far as like the, 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 um, the, the charity goes, yeah, my wife and I, we have a nonprofit. It's called Village Impact. We build schools over in Kenya. And um, what I can tell you is that the thing that makes that possible is the business that we have today. Yeah. You know, I used to struggle with uh, guilt around making money. And I don't know if anybody in your audience has ever dealt with this, Dave, but I certainly did where, you know, back in the day when I had that consulting business, um, I would, we would get to about like the $400,000 mark in revenue. And my subconscious would be like, whoa, Stewie, buddy, listen, this is, this is way more money than both your parents combined are making. You don't um, deserve all of that. You don't deserve all yeah. of that. Like, you know, and, and my subconscious would kick in with all these thoughts and, and I wouldn't realize it at the time, but I would start doing stupid things. Like I just wouldn't call clients back or I wouldn't, you know, rinse and repeat marketing campaigns that I knew worked. Yeah. And it was just like my subconscious, like kicking in. And so of course my income would come back down and everything would, you know, go back to normal. And it wasn't until like, the first time we were in Kenya and we were looking to build our very first school and I'm talking to the chairman of this community and I'm asking him like how much things cost. We didn't know this was, we had never done this before. And I, I asked him the question. I said, how much does it cost to fund the full-time salary of a teacher? 
and he thought for a minute and he said, um, it's about a hundred dollars a month. And I was like, oh my goodness, because something in that moment clicked. And that was a light bulb went on, which was, I was selling our software for a hundred dollars for a single site license. And I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. What if I just, if I sell another license and I just allocate the money from that sale to funding the full-time salary of a teacher? Like imagine the impact that would have. And then the real light bulb went off, which was, well, wait a minute, Stu, what if you make a whole lot more money and then you could give a whole lot more to the causes and the people that you're passionate about? And that was the game changer for me, Dave. That's what unleashed my desire to make as much money as possible. I love making money now. There's no guilt around it because that money creates opportunity to be able to give to the people and causes that I'm passionate about. And what I realized was the more money I make, the more impact I can have. And so in today's day and age, it has never been a better time to be able to accelerate the growth of any business. And I believe that wholeheartedly because I see it every single day with what we are helping people do with developing membership sites. And heck, you're seeing this if you if people just take a look around. You know, the car wash across the street from our office, it's now built around a membership site. I was in the mall in San Francisco a few weeks back and I'm going to get a green smoothie. They have a membership site based on 10 bucks a month gets you two smoothies and a member price for every smoothie thereafter. Membership sites are being incorporated into every kind of business all around us. The big companies, Amazon and Apple and Netflix and Spotify, all based on membership models. Heck, even Walmart has a membership model now. But so are other companies in all these different kinds of markets that we're talking about. And that is what lights me up. There's never been a better time to make uh, and grow a business. And it's about when that business is growing, it's about the opportunity we all have to have far greater impact, whether it be the causes that you're passionate about, whether it be people like your family and friends, or whether it be your community, your kid's school, you can have far greater impact when you have those financial resources. So I get lit up by this, Dave, because it's a there's a bigger, bigger purpose to all of this. And, uh, and that's what excites me. And certainly the work that we're doing in Kenya keeps grounded to why we're doing all of what it is that we do. Awesome. Well, the good news is everybody that's watching and listening, Stu is the guy that can help you unleash that membership group inside your business, whatever it is you're doing. So hopefully you're paying attention. Hopefully you got that guide at gamble.com slash tribe guide. And Stu, thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your time in Hawaii to pour into me and my audience. And uh, I cannot thank you enough. And uh, I just uh, hope and pray that the people listening will actually start to implement some of this stuff through the guide and some of the other exciting stuff you have coming in the months to come. Well, thank you, buddy. And I appreciate the opportunity. And I just want to encourage everybody because, you know, it, uh, it's a really, really exciting time. And if you're a speaker, if you're an author, if you're a coach, a consultant, um, you have everything you need available to you right now to be able to hit the ground running with a membership site. And I hope everybody goes to and grabs the guide. It is awesome resource to help you get clarity on how to move forward. So gamble.com forward slash tribe guide. Dave, thanks so much for the time here today. Thanks, Stu. I appreciate it.